right, you guys, uh, pardon my voice uh, if it goes out. Um, just, uh, I'm still fighting this silly cough. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is the free response question that you uh, um, try to tackle, and I'm going to see if I can show you in a brief amount of time what's going on here. Draw a physical picture of the situation. We have uh, ground, and we have a forward foot, and we have a rear foot. The angle might not accurately represent what's going on, but it's pretty close. Um, we know that uh, there, there's a force going down the length of this leg and a force going down the length of this leg. And those forces uh, will be equal according to this assumption, weight is equally distributed. But uh, the forces there along those angles are not necessarily half of this person's weight. Uh, it's interesting to find out that it turns out it doesn't actually matter if you do think of it that way you can still arrive at the correct answer here. We need to free body diagram each foot. So, uh, rear foot. Let's look at what's going on there. X and Y axes. Positive Y, positive X. Now, um, force is acting on the foot. Well, the, there's a force coming down the leg at this angle but we draw our arrows going away from the object that we are diagramming. So here's that force. And I can just call this uh, force of the leg. There's also force of the leg. And so this guy is just force of the leg. Uh, there is this tendency because of that force to slide uh, sort of rearward or in the negative x direction. And that comes about from the horizontal component of this force. And we are certainly hoping that this uh, horizontal component is canceled by a friction force, force of static friction in the forward direction. Uh, the uh, vertical component of this force of the leg, we uh, expect to be canceled, so equal and opposite, um, by the normal force, the reaction force with the ground, just the, the surface supporting us. There's a normal force right there. And I can label each of these components. Uh, this guy is going to be force of the leg uh, times, uh, oh, i got to be careful here. Where is the angle that I'm dealing with? Um, if I show an angle theta here and an angle theta here, this, it would be the same angle, incidentally, then where is theta in my diagram here? Well, uh, that angle theta, it turns out, would be here. Angle theta. So this guy right here is force of the leg times cosine of theta. This guy here is force of the leg times sine of theta. All right. And we certainly hope that that rear foot is in equilibrium. How about the front foot or the forward foot? How would you like to call it? There's an axis going here. OK. And again, y and x. So now, uh, there is the force coming from the leg acting on the foot. Here we go. There's force of the leg. And it has a vertical component. And it has a horizontal component. The horizontal component here, uh, we certainly hope, is uh, being canceled by some friction this way, force of static friction. And this vertical component, we hope, is being canceled. We expect it to be canceled by a normal force there. I can label these components. This is force of the leg. Uh, again, where's theta? Well, theta for the forefoot or front foot would be 
here and therefore here. So this is um, force of the leg times sine of theta. This guy is force of the leg times cosine of theta. This, this component is adjacent to the angle, therefore cosine. There are my free body diagrams. There's a lot going on there. But relatively straightforward. Okay. Um, I now have to calculate the maximum stride length this person can take. Well, if I look at what's happening with the stride length, essentially, and I do know the length of the leg, uh, essentially I have a triangle and I know the length of a leg. I also know the length of the other leg. And I want to know a stride length. I want to know this distance here. Um, this length. All right. Well, uh, there's uh, something I'm going to have to know. I'm, I'm going to have this angle theta. And uh, something that's going to make this really handy is just come down with a vertical line perpendicular to the surface. And what that does, it actually bisects this length. Since those two legs are the same length, and uh, we are equally distributing the weight on each foot. So there will be a, a sort of a value to this side of this right triangle, x, where x equals 1 half L. Okay. So maybe I can look for x and double it and get the value for L. All right. Maybe that's a better way of expressing this. L equals 2x. There we go. All right, <clears throat> uh, I believe in order to do this, I will really only have to focus on one foot. I don't have to deal with both. I could, but it's just kind of doing the same work twice. I'm going to look at the front foot um, just because. There's no particular reason. Just because. And I'm going to look at uh, this information for the front foot. And the first thing I will do is sum of forces in the x direction. And what I have in the x direction is uh, force of the leg times cosine of theta. That's in the positive x direction. And in the negative x direction, I have force of static friction. So minus force of static friction. And this sum of forces, we certainly hope, is going to be zero. We want, uh, we want to have stability here. Well, there's some substitutions uh, I can do here. Uh, I know that static friction force is uh, dependent upon the coefficient of static friction and also on the normal force. But interesting about the normal force, it ha I know that it happens to be equal to FL times sine of theta. And so instead of writing normal force, I can write that. So what I have is FL cosine theta minus, and friction is coefficient of friction times normal force, but normal force here is equal to FL sine theta. All right. That, uh, that would likely be helpful. There's another interesting thing going on here. And if I look at what's happening, if I were to place, uh, say, a scale under each foot, well, the scale would provide an upward force, and it would read the value of that upward force. And the scale can't give you any information about the horizontal stuff. But if we are equally distributing the weight, then each of these upward forces is equal to 1 half of the weight. So this normal force is one half the weight of this person. So that's kind of neat. Um, instead of writing this, I could write one half of the normal force also. So it, I, I don't know yet. I may uh, 
have to use one or the other version. Not equals, I'm sorry, minus. So coefficient of static friction. Another way to represent normal force here is one half the weight. And the weight is mg. So I'm going to write one half mg. OK, not sure which one I'm going to need just yet, which of these two lines right here. Now, uh, I'm going to do some of forces in the y direction next. And I get, well, normal force is the positive force. And in the negative direction, I have FL sine of theta. And that's sum equals 0. Well, the normal force, I, you know, again, I can write 1 half times the weight. The weight is just mg. So I can write 1 half mg minus FL sine theta. And from this, I can determine that FL sine theta equals 1 half mg. OK, well, that uh, uh, kind of looks like it gives me something I can do. Well, it just kind of takes me back and forth between these two lines. I could say, well, if I know 1 half mg, is equal to FL sine theta, I could just substitute FL sine theta for mg. So uh, knowing this allows me to just switch between these two as I need to, as I see fit. OK, interesting, but um, where do I want to go with this? <clears throat> I think I want to keep the uh, FL sine theta version. I think I want that version right there. The reason is, um, I know I've got sine and cosine, but also FL is going to end up canceling out. Watch this. From this line right here, I can say that coefficient of static friction times FL sine theta is equal to FL cosine theta. FL goes away. It cancels out. And I end up with um, mu static. And if I divide both sides by the sine of theta, mu static is equal to cosine of theta divided by sine theta. Well, all right. What good is that? Well, this it, sine divided by cosine gives you tangent. So this appears to be the inverse of tangent. Now, not, not uh, undoing tangent, but just the reciprocal, I should say, of tangent theta, right? Well, it's not the coefficient of static friction I'm looking for. I actually want this angle. Remember, if I know that angle and I know the hypotenuse, I can find the value of x, and I can double x and find the length of the stride. So I want to do a switcheroo here. Tangent theta, I just said switcheroo. I'm so sorry. There we go, is the inverse of the coefficient of friction. The angle, therefore, is equal to the inverse tangent of 1 over coefficient of standard friction. Turns out that when I plug this in, and, and this is really interesting, look at this angle. It depends on nothing except coefficient of static friction. Nothing at all. This should remind you of um, looking at objects on an incline. But you know, it's a slightly different situation going on here. So <clears throat> when you plug in your numbers, it turns out you should get an angle of 81.5 degrees. Awesome. Now what? Now what I do is I come back here and I say, well, OK, I want x. This is the adjacent side to theta. I know theta, and I know the hypotenuse. Well, for the adjacent side, Cosine of an angle is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And it is the adjacent side I am looking for. So I have hypotenuse times cosine of theta gives me the adjacent side. The adjacent side is x. All right, Let's plug and chug at this point. Uh, the hypotenuse, 0.98 meters. 
cosine of 81.5 degrees. Give me x. Want to work this math? X turns out to be 0 0.14 meters. And since L equals 2x, the L, which is the stride length, is 2 times that. Therefore, L is going to be 0 0.28 meters. And I've got the answer. Okay, a lot going on there. Uh, if you've got questions after watching this, let me know. Thanks for watching.